Oh, I'm sorry. I thought someone was going to introduce me. So I'll, I'll introduce Take myself. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> coaches, customers, people thinking about being coaches or customers. So I made some little notes. If you see me staring down, it's, it's this thing. I'm going to talk about the best way to get started for those of us that have already joined. For those of you that are thinking about joining, you can know what it's about before you join. Or if you're already in, you can maybe figure out what to do. So the first thing in joining is uh, to have a goal, some kind of a vision, what you want your life to look like. Like you want to accomplish X, Y, and Z, but then what is your life going to look like compared to what it looks like now? And you want to make it really compelling because life throws wrenches at you and it has to be compelling enough to push you past all that stuff. It's just real world stuff. Uh, the next step is going to be to enroll with product, because if you have products, you can probably have a really good shot at achieving those goals, whether they're health goals or financial goals or combination of both. I have a combination of both. And also it allows you to build a business organically because you'll be a product of the product. And in this business, the product is health and fitness and feeling good and energy and Everything that just goes into a happy, healthy, healing kind of lifestyle. That's the products that we have. So being a product of that product, pretty sweet. Um, and then the next step after you get enrolled and you get the right product, uh, by the way, you want to do that with your coach, the person that's going to be sponsoring you because they can help you pick the best product. It's going to be a challenge pack of some sort. They'll have everything that you need to support you with your goals. So now you're enrolled. You're open for business immediately upon that welcome page that says congratulations you're now officially a team beach body coach screenshot that page save it and then you know 50 years from now you can look back and say look this is the day that i enrolled and it'll be time stamps and everything it'll be beautiful so take a screenshot of that. i just made that up it's not part of my notes oh, it's a good idea though inspired <laughs> <laughs> And then let's assume, I mean, you can get started with things that you could wait for product and wait till you use the product to get started with the business, or you can get started with the business right away. You just communicate that with your coach. But for the purpose of this here, I'm going to assume that you're going to want to get started right away. So the first thing that you're going to do after you get enrolled and you got your welcoming thing or your congratulations thing is you are going to want to probably write down your vision that you probably developed before you signed up because many people aren't going to put down a credit card or a debit card. They don't have a clear idea of what they want. They don't want it really badly. So at this point, if you haven't written it down, just jot it down and maybe share it with a support team. Hi, Sherry. My friend Sherry. Everybody say welcome. Hello, Sherry. Welcome. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> I'm so glad you're on here. Yay! Yay! We love you. Yay! And this, this is all being recorded, so no worries. So, and so to move right along, the next step that you want to do after uh, writing all that stuff down and starting to crystallize it, first mechanical action that you're going to take, in my opinion, should be to have a, a coming out post that you make on Facebook or social media. Now, I'm not going to get into the different examples here because I could be here all day. But I have a document full of examples, and none of it's weird. It's all just really, some of it's kind of corny and cheesy and comical and humorous, and it's just reflections of different people's personalities that have come out on social media in ways that reflected who they are. And that's going to be up there with my number one tips for everybody is to always be you out loud. If you're getting training from somebody, including me, where it feels like you're being pulled away from yourself, don't do it or communicate with the person who's training you and just let them know. And uh, I mean, if I'm training somebody and I say, this might be a good idea, and they're like, no, that doesn't feel right, that does, that's not me. I'm like, okay, cool, let's figure it out so that it is you. You know, so that's well, up there with my biggest tips is always uh, be yourself so that you're or organic and you're not a fraud. Big deal, right? Uh, let's see here. So coming out and work with uh, your team, get connected to your team. Like right away when you enroll for this thing, you want to get involved in, in the community, whatever that is. Usually for us, it's going to be a closed, well, not closed, but a private, secure Facebook group where we can all get together a safe place to not be judged. And we can talk about ideas and help each other out. And there's going to be trainings in this and that. It's really great to be a part of a community with people. And you're probably going to sync up with other people, you know, resonate with other people more than other people, and you're going to form new friendships, and that's part of the whole community thing. So that's one of the first things you really should do, like the day that you get enrolled. Even if you're waiting to 
build the business until you try the product, get connected to the community the day that you enroll anyway. That's, I think that's really, really, really important. Uh, so you've got the coming out post and connecting with your team and getting involved in the, in the community. Um, and then you're going to want to work with your team and lean on your team and your coach and whoever else to help you respond to people that might click like on that post or share or they've commented or who knows what. And then you'll work together on, um, on what to do at that point. And I'm not going to tell you here because I want you to not know what to say so that you have to lean on your team. <laughs> ah, okay so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to figure out how you're going to come up with the time to start building this because for almost everybody that starts this myself included we're so busy and you know the average person is probably going to have a family and a job maybe two jobs or three jobs these days and you got all this stuff going on and suddenly you're throwing a beach body business on top of it. So your whole life is going to go into chaos, which goes against why you probably wanted to do this. Maybe you want time freedom. A lot of people have entrepreneurialism on their brain because they like the concept of time freedom, the financial freedom that can buy someone their freedom of time. So I would say minimally, I'll, I'll just use my example. I'm not saying this to be right or to be wrong, just going off my example. When I got started, I only had about 20 minutes a day that I could do this. But I was consistent and I showed up every day for 20 minutes and it was enough to get the ball rolling. And then more time opened up over time and now I have complete freedom of time so I don't need a job anymore. Pretty cool. So, so I have a training video, uh, you know, exactly how to come up with priorities and how to take things off maybe temporarily or permanently. I won't get into that on this one, but I've got a website where I've got all this stuff. But if you can block out like 20 minutes a day or better yet, you know, half hour to an hour would really be ideal, like 40, 40 minutes, an hour, somewhere in there. But if all you got is 20 minutes, thankfully, that's enough. Like, whatever you can do, it's always going to be enough because it builds on top of each other because it's residual. Residual is a magical new kind of income that is foreign to most people, but it's something that has the potential to build on itself. So even just 20 minutes a day is enough to get the ball rolling like it was for me. So figure out when you got time to do this and if something has to go for now so be it maybe tv time i don't know something that doesn't line up with the, with your priorities for most people the tv time is an easy one to pick out who knows what that is because it's something you got to figure out um so the next uh, mechanical thing after that is going to be to write down the names of people that you're thinking of that maybe might be interested in getting healthy and so i'm not going to get into inviting here because there's so many ways to invite and I've got stuff in documents with a million and one different examples and it's all reflective towards different personalities and I never invite anybody to join this or to sign up or buy anything I always invite people to look at it because I think they might like it and take a look at it see if it's something you can see yourself doing that would be a fit for you that might help you solve a problem or accomplish the goal and I always let people know that because then there's um it's the opposite of how everybody else invites from every other opportunity. So people are generally okay with saying no or whatever, but people typically say yes because it's just really easygoing and chill when it's structured that way. Hi, Lisa. Nice to see you. Finally got in. <laughs> but in an invitation, I'll throw a generalized con uh, one out there just for the conception of it all. It could be like, uh, let's say you're really great friends with Sue and you'd be like, Hey Sue, I just joined this health and fitness company, Beachbody. I'm kind of big and I don't have a lot of energy. I'm going to get in shape. I need this for the accountability and I'm going to, I'm going to make money doing it too. Cause I need that accountability for myself. And I don't know if that would be for you, but I think the product is something you might really enjoy. Maybe we can be like gangbusters and do this together. And so that could be a really simple invitation to just do it with people. That's why waiting till you're in shape is a bad idea because you're more relatable out of shape and you can invite people to do it with you and, and whatever vernacular that you have that your friends know you by. So you're always going to be yourself. So inviting is really cool and important when you do it that way. And tons of trainings that I won't get into here, but conceptually, just so you understand what inviting is like, it's that. Um, the next thing that you should do, in my opinion, is start creating content 
And it could be as simple as just putting stuff out there about your journey. Like I started day one today, I was a sweaty, floppy mess. And maybe on, you know, by day two or three, it's like I showed up again, it was hard, but you know what? I got a little bit better. I lasted two minutes longer and I recovered just a little bit better. And I wasn't, I threw up uh, two times instead of four. I don't know, whatever it is. So just like be honest and sharing your, your story always with a positive aim and share, share those. I share my little victories all the time when I'm sharing my journey and all of this. And every time I learn something, like I learned how to make uh, a different smoothie, I'll, I'll demo how to do it and I'll talk a little bit about it. Or if I learn a cool fact about blueberries, um, about what it does to the brain, maybe I'll share something about that or whatever I'm interested in. It doesn't even have to be food or anything related to this. It can be a topic that has nothing to do with health and fitness, just something you really love and you start talking about it. So that's one of my favorite things about all of this is content creation coming from an attraction standpoint versus chasing people, attracting people that are into what you're into. So if you were to go up and down my timeline, for example, on Facebook, you'll gather from looking at it that, um, first of all, you won't really see Beachbody because I do not promote Beachbody, I promote me which is what I teach you to promote you. So you be you, but uh, you'll, you'll get a really good feeling of my interests. I'm into outdoors and nature and travel. I love food. I, I love this thing that I call a chocolate orgasm. It's a superfood it's shakeology. Um, I love my family and you know, whatever else I'm into, you're going to see it there. I love talking about money and debunking all the misconceptions about money and uh, whatever you're interested in, you're going to be able to talk about that as well. And that's how you're going to build an audience, expand your circle, grow a network of like-minded individuals that like stuff that's similar to stuff that you like and not even for the purpose of getting them into your new business it's just for the purpose of networking and and just expanding your circle and who knows what you're going to get from them or what they're going to get from you and it may have nothing to do with beach body but some of them will be interested in beach body they'll start poking around and who knows you just never know how it's going to work out so you can't have too many friends you know that old saying too many you can't have too many authentic good friends so if I can add that little nuance so you're gonna learn how to um, share things and invite in a way that is attracting the right people to you rather than you know chasing people and all that stuff I most of my personal development is on that very concept of attraction based concepts of inviting and sharing content and all that stuff and you're gonna learn that too it's all part of you being you out loud and stuff so the next thing, in my opinion, is going to be to get in the habit of these new daily tasks. We call them daily core vital behaviors, and it's just a few of them that we do every day. And that's going to be a personal development. That could be just watching a training video or a motivational video or reading a piece of literature that puts really great ideas into your brain. It could just be a few minutes of that a day or longer if you want. That's totally up to you. And we got all kinds of book recommendations and videos and people to follow that you can explore and, and you'll find some trainer, some speaker somewhere that really resonates with you and then you're going to buy all their stuff and probably fly out to some four corners of the state to go see them speak. Who knows what? It's pretty neat. That's, at least that's been my experience when I resonate with somebody really well. Um, and these daily core activities, uh, uh, the personal development, uh, inviting people in a, an attractive way that I went over earlier and sharing content in a way that attracts people to you that think in a similar way that you do and uh, being a product of the product consuming it every day so that you can build this organically and and have content to share among content that you share that is sharing your own personal journey and the little victories that you score and whatever ugliness you had to go through to score those little victories because hey that's real life otherwise it's not very relatable or honest and that is about it so for a clear and precise goal, I think this is important to have a goal of enrolling three people with the purchase of product that they can use that's in alignment with whatever goal they said that they have. I think that's a reasonable low goal. If you really want to go for it, have your first goal of I'm going to get my first five people and we're going to be like gangbusters, the six of us, and we're all going to achieve these awesome goals. And whether it's three or two or even one or five or six or 10 or 20, However many that you have for your initial goal, go for a minimum of three, no big deal. Um, whatever stories comes out of that, that's gonna be more content that you can post about when you're sharing not just your own little victories, but maybe some other people. Like my, my best friend, Sally Sue, uh, started drinking these superfood shakes that I drink and that I sell too. 
and she busted past a 20 year weight loss plateau and she's got the energy to play with her kids and her skin is beautiful, wears less, you know, whatever is going on with this person. And then you got other people and all these little micro victories and big victories that comes out that all gives you content that you can post about on your page. And I do that pretty regularly as well. So my own story, other people's stories, especially people that I know and people that enroll with me and are within my team, that's all stuff that we can use to share to inspire other people to do something, to take some kind of action that is in alignment with their goals, health goals, financial goals. You can talk about me, Tom Birkenmeyer. You know me. You can say Tom Birkenmeyer used to be this dumb, educably retarded straight D student that uh, repeated the first grade because he wasn't smart enough to go on to second grade. And he's an entrepreneur and took him two and a half years and he doesn't need a job anymore. And I don't know. I know him personally. He's not an infomercial because I always question those things, but Tom did it. He's a real human being. I know him. So this is it. I'm, I'm jumping in and you can invite your friends, you know, based on something like that. So just for example, <laughs> and, uh, that's it. That's, in my opinion, those are the things you should, you should do when you, when you first get started and keep it all extremely digestible. If you can only do one thing at a time, which is most people, especially me, I can only do one thing at a time, but it adds up over, I've been doing it 10 years. So that's the only reason I have any fluency or any skill in this at all is because it's been consistent for 10 years. But it's important that if you decide to do this, you get started with whatever you can do, even if it's just a simple little post or you invite one person or you get connected to your team and you start to get to know people in the community. That's something, some sort of actionable thing. Ta -da. Yay. Oh, oh yeah, I had a question section for all of you. I almost forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. We'll start with you. What is your favorite personal development, single piece of personal development, and how has it helped you? And keep it within 30 seconds. Oh, is that for Shelly? No, it's for you, Kelly. I heard Kelly. <laughs> piece of personal development. Oh my goodness. There's so many. How do I pick one? If you have a favorite author or a favorite, you know, whatever, uh, you can pick an umbrella if you need to. I can pick an umbrella? Yeah. Like if you can't narrow it down to a single piece, maybe an author, or if you can't narrow it down to a, uh, a piece of content, maybe a content format, like I like videos over blogs or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I think I've said it before is I, I like, I like videos and videos over bl blogs and, and books these days. Um, I need um, I need really short digestible pieces of information. I, I have to I, my go to for those I would have to say would be wow uh, these days it's Darren Hardy and and uh, Ray Higdon for for the most part yeah um, I mean they're both really excellent um, and uh, they <laughs> they they help me immeasurably and 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 it's 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 not often something like when I when I when I re listen to something they produce, it's not always uh, something that hits me right away. But but you know over the course of a day, I, you know kind of assimilated, and then it really helps me to to uh, I don't know bring bring ideas that, uh, for you know how to promote my business or how to how to um, uh, invite or how to. Um, uh, create content, um, you know. It's in the, the creative juices flowing so that you're popping right. off ideas. Right, exactly. So when I do have quiet time, which is rare, um, you know, everything kind of comes together and gels and, and um, it releases chemicals from the brain when you're popping off ideas and it's healing. It's physically healing to the cells in your body it, it totally is and it, it releases it, it releases endorphins it, 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 when it happens i don't know if you guys notice that but oh like, yeah i notice when you have those epiphanies you know when everything yeah. just kind of coalesces and gives you energy that's for sure shelly how about you what's your favorite piece of personal development and how has it helped you and keep it within about 30 seconds if possible um, I have two that pop in my head when you ask the question. Um, the first is The Universe Has Your Back by Gabby Bernstein, um, talking about keeping your energy high and attracting positive, you know, like, I, I really 
appreciate that. And I try to live a life of gratitude and keep myself positive as much as possible. Like I'm not Pollyanna, I do have bad days, but you know, like I do try to attract positive things. And the other thing is um, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero, because it's the same kind of like, sometimes I need rah rah. You know, like sometimes I, I'm not feeling confident and I'm feeling kind of poopy about myself. And I like the things that are like, no, like everybody makes mistakes and you just take it as a learning experience and move on instead of thinking that the world crashed down because you invited someone and they said no. You know, like it's just all part of the process. So I like both of those. With the two that popped into my head when you asked the question. How about you, Lisa? You heard the questions. What's your answer? Oh, well, I'm really into Dr. Brene Brown right now. I talked about her last week. And Shelly, you turned me on to her uh, Imperfect You book. And book. I've got that in Audible now. Went and found a home from one of my little credits. And uh, she's just, she's so relatable to me right now and where I am. And I think with personal development, that that's where you go. You're a different person every day, every week, every step of this journey. And you're going to expose yourself to these personal developments, and one of them is going to grab onto your soul. And then you'll move on. And then something else will go. So right now, it's, it's all, you know, loving yourself for who you are, uh, being imperfect, loving wholeheartedly, being, you know, you. And next week, I may need a jolt in order to get out into business. And so I'm going to go back to Darren Hardy and his uh, thoughts about, um, oh, the critical mind and how the decision-making part of your critical mind is not infinite and it gets tired and you need to rest it and then bring it back again. Just, it depends upon where you are. And that's why doing personal development every day, a little bit here and a little bit there, is really good because it keeps your journey going. Very good. It also gives you ideas for new content. I love creating attractive content and I read so many things and I'll underline it or I'll put a time step on a video where it's like, ooh, I gotta do like a segment on that. Absolutely. I'm getting ready to blog her. The little animated section because I mean that's that's good for her too. And I would like to share it with the people who are watching me and my tribe, the little ghosty people who are all back there, my friends who are very active. I, I'd like them to see this because I want them to know where I am as well. The more they know me, the more they want to come on the journey with me. Well said. So I'm going to answer my own question now. So I'm not like Caesar. Um, I, guess, <laughs> I, I guess I got three. I can't narrow it down to one either, guys. So uh, consuming product, being a product of the product, that's personal development. Mm. Okay, that's okay. fair. I do that every day. Yes, okay, yeah. and, and the next one is gonna be a book by Jeff Olson called The Slight Edge and audio by Jim Rohn called Building Your Network Marketing Business. And what I get out of those two pieces of personal development is really great philosophical, easy but deep thinking, great idea. I just get a refinement of how I think. I mean, that, that was the beginning of how I started to shape my thoughts around money, or evolve them, I should say, into better thinking about money and life and how I spend my time and decisions and excuses and what failures mean and, you know, the whole everything. So those are those are my two that I recommend. Great starting places. Those are my starting places, too. And I, it got me to start thinking differently and thinking better than I was before, which really made the difference in the results in my business and in my life, too. Um, Can I add one more? Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Just because we're talking about starting out and personal development, I don't know if you read The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster by Darren Hardy. And I got the audiobook, and it's, it was long, but it gives you everything to expect. That if, you know, when you start out and you're inviting people and no one wants to do it, great, you're on the right track. Like, don't get discouraged and keep going. And I think if I had read it in the beginning of my journey, it would have been like, oh, okay, I'm doing the right thing now. Oh, what am I doing wrong? You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's important for people starting out to see that these steps are all part of the process. Say the name of that book again. The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. 
by Darren Hardy. By Darren Hardy. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. I have I have one more question for each of us, and then we'll just go into Q and A or or chit chatting or goofing around or whatever we want to do. So my one more question is, um, what's the single best, biggest, most awesome thing you've done that's helped you get started? And what is the single worst thing that if you could go back, you could remove that single worst thing? And if you want to say why, that's fine too. Kelly, go first. Single best thing. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the, the thing that's helped you the most so far and then the thing that was like the worst mistake ever. Wow. Um, the, for some reason, I want to go from negative to positive. You can. It um, doesn't matter. The single, the single worst thing that I did ever was, um, was I don't know, I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, doubting and, and procrastinating, you know, and, and uh, not really, fig you know, not figuring out. Um, early on and um, how to best use my time and, and being, you know, right. following too many shiny objects. I think that's the thing that, that gets a lot of us in the beginning of starting our businesses. It's too many shining objects, thinking that we need to know more before we begin. And, and I think, you know, a lot of people make that mistake and I certainly did. Right. Um, single best thing I ever, I've ever done, uh, just several times just following my 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 gut my intuition you know when those vo those little voices in your head say do something and no matter how crazy it sounds <laughs> you do it. um like the day that instead of erasing a a, a a page i made by mistake i changed the name of it and it went viral you know it's just you just don't know you just have to trust your gut you have to you know you just have to to to, to go with it and um and trust that it's coming from a from a positive and a good place. Um, so, and um, aside from that, the single best thing I ever did was, um, you know, getting to know all of you guys and, sp and spending time oh, with you and starting those community. Things. You know, community is huge, and you know that that's probably another mistake that I made early on is just not really you know tapping into the community and, and feeling like I was alone in a lot of things. Right. Um, you're, you're right, Tom. That that's that's huge. You got to do that really early, like right from the get go. Yeah, and everyone you enroll, customers, coaches, and to the right mm -hmm. community. That's you know appropriate for them. How about you, Shelley? Well, it's funny because my positive was going to be very similar to Kelly's because that's I remember fine. when I started, I sent you an email, and you thought that was very strange that I introduced myself to my upline coach, my upline upline coach, and. Uh, you did? You did. I, I don't somewhere, but <laughs> please share that with me. I'm so I've never felt that way. I'm like, oh, cool. Somebody reached out to me. I was okay. No, you didn't say it like it was a bad thing, but just that it was like not a, a typical thing. For right. Someone. No, that's that's true. It's yeah, not no, typical. It wasn't a negative at all. Okay. It was kind of like, oh, okay. Because I was very into getting to know everyone. And, you know, so for me, I'm good at getting to know the people that I think are more experienced than me. So my positive is running my groups where I'm the one that's running it because that's not as easy for me to be like in the leadership role. So it's helped me a lot with confidence and helping people. And the more I help people, the more I just love helping people. I've always been a helper, but I've never really been able to take the first step. If someone asked me game on, but to actually say, Hey, I can help, you know, is a positive. If I could go back and change something, it would be copying and pasting scripts. Don't do it. Don't send people scripts that you copy and paste. <laughs> or, or modify them if you do. Exactly. Well, that's what I mean. I remember copying and pasting and it said, hey, you know, we'll just say, hey, Cheryl. And I didn't realize I copied that part. So when I send it to people, it'd say, hey, Brian, hey, Cheryl. <laughs> That's funny. very embarrassing. I've, I've done that before too. I just laugh and yeah, talk, you know, and in, in the end, it's no big deal. No, okay. and in the grand scheme of things, no mistake I've made has been earth shattering. You know, like you can get over whatever it is. You just okay. have to laugh at it and move on. Take it for Le what it is. Lisa, no pressure. We got less than four minutes, and I still have to go. So go ahead. Okay, I'll go quick. <laughs> um, I think that the when I started. I made every single mistake in the book. 
And I think yeah. one of the biggest things I did was I did not ask questions. I, I watched every video you ever made in no particular order whatsoever. Damn. And I, it took me six months, eight months to figure out what invite was. Invite, invite to what? Are we going to a party? What is this? And my mind was so busy, I could not assimilate anything. And I went around and around and around. But the part that was the bad part is that I didn't give myself permission to learn at my own pace. I felt like I was six miles behind the starting line and I should have given myself permission to do that. If I don't know what I'm doing and I'm six miles back there, that's okay. I can walk the six miles and then start. It's all at my own pace. And uh, one of the most interesting things that I ever learned from you was that I think it was going through 30 days. You said at one point in time that you had to be you, you had to decide that you were worthy to learn. And once you decided you were worthy, it would, you could assimilate it. And that it only took a split second to make that decision. And it was so true because it took me weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to get there. But in a split second, I made a decision and I emailed you and I said, okay, I'm worthy. Hey, all and right. I started it all out. The best thing I ever did was to figure out that I was in the middle and go back and establish my brand, who I was, who I wanted to contact and what it was. I'm, it was not who I thought I was. I had to do some really good soul searching. I had been years and years and years being a mom, doing a job, not knowing who I was. I was everything for everybody else. And I had to sit down and do that in our job. What we, what we do here in order to attract, it is vital to do that, to know who you are so you know who your tribe is and you recognize each other. And it's not a waste of time and it is not a bad thing. It's, I'm 60 years old. Who am I, what am I doing figuring out who I am? It's a very good thing and I am so glad because it's not just something that we're out there selling. It is a whole life process and a journey and doing it all together is just amazing. I'm done. Yeah, you be, it goes back to you be you. Sometimes you got to figure out what that is, but that's okay. You be you. Okay. You can't so, be you for a minute, Tom, go. Yeah, I've got less than a minute. Um, so look okay. forward to the after party in case we get cut off. But the single best thing that I did was I started uh, buying into personal development material and started allowing it to change my bad ideas into good ideas. That's the best thing I did. The worst thing I did is, uh, I guess, resisting the idea of personal development. I don't need that. I'm good. I was full of shit. <laughs> I, was not, I was not good. So the worst thing I did was resisting personal development. The best thing I did was embracing personal development because that affects your belief. Your belief drives your actions. Your actions drive your results. So it all starts with what you think, how you think, and uh, how you hold it to yourself to be true. So. Wow. Excellent. Wow. So we're going to, are we doing uh, a part two? Okay. We are doing a part two, and that is uh, one of the beauties of, of uh, attending this live is that if you do, as a guest, you get to attend the after party. If you